I recently set with Virgin Voyages on the Dominican Days itinerary, and for our stop in the Dominican Republic, we chose a chocolate and rum tour, and I loved it. This short thing takes you on a distillery tour as well as a chocolate factory tour. And on this day, we went during the summer, so it was super hot. But not to worry, they did provide bottled water for you to drink to get you plenty hydrated before the onslaught of rum that you're going to consume over the next few hours. After some water on your way to the distillery, which was only about 10 minutes away from port, you arrive at the house of rum. When you first get there, you're going to go to the entrance, as you see here. And the first thing you will see once inside is barrels everywhere. It is pretty dark in this room and that's, and that's part of the process and you get some information about the distillery process. Then you enter a room where you watch a short video about the distillery, the history, the process, very formative and good quality. After about five, 10 minutes of that, then you go to the next room which have the rum and lots of it. They're very generous of the rum here. They have seven different types to try. So once everyone gets a glass, everyone takes a shot together, and it was a very drawable experience. And if you wanted more, they were happy to give you plenty of it. So if you're a light drinker, you didn't have to drink too much, maybe just to seven shots, maybe less. But if you want to have a really good time and you want more, they're happy to give it to you. I know I asked for a few extra shots. And of all seven types, my favorite was the Mama Wana. Don't confuse this with the other word that wins with Wana. It is completely illegal here in the US on the federal level, it has nothing to do with the other thing. It's basically just a really good spice rum with star mees and some other stuff. It's more of a Dominican Republic specialty blend. Unfortunately, I only took one bottle home with me this time. I'm going to Dominican Republic again very soon and uh, I'm going to get a lot more bottles of that because it was amazing. So after the rum tour, then you go to the plantation. It is roughly an hour or so drive up there. So it is a pretty long distance away. We go up to the beautiful mountains. The view is gorgeous. I love the enemy ride to that plantation. And when you get to the plantation, of course, if you want more rum, they'll give you more rum. They're happy to give you as much rum or water as you want. Coke and rum, Sprite and rum, you name it, they got it. This plantation that you're on is kind of a mix between a plantation and a park. They have bananas there, coffee, avocados, chocolate, cocoa, which is the plant that's used to make chocolate. And all this was fresh as fresh could be. Oh, and mangoes, of course. So actually, we had one of those fresh off the tree. And my wife's favorite part of this area was the coffee. They had fresh ground coffee straight from the plantation there. So I'm not a big coffee drinker. I drink it. Would I drink it again? No, not really. I don't like coffee, but my wife, she liked it, but it is more of a bitter coffee. So more on the black side of the things. And it was, it was very fresh, just not my preference. They also had a cacao plant, which is what they use to make chocolate. They broke one of these up right in front of us and we were able to eat the actual raw stuff that makes chocolate. As you can see, once you break this open, there's a seed in the middle with a milky white coating on it. The milky white coating covering the seed is very sweet versus the actual seed itself it is very bitter. And that's what they used to make chocolate. Chocolate, it is very bitter. They had to sweeten it up. Personally, I actually liked it. My wife said it was too bitter for her. But again, personal preference. But I thought it was a very cool experience. After some time exploring this area, enjoying the view, the flowers, the plants, all that fun stuff, they didn't take a short ride to go eat. This little food and shop area that we went to, and this food here kind of reminded me a lot of Cajun food. It makes sense when you actually think who colonized the Dominican Republic back in the day. It was the French. Cajun food tastes the way it does because it's some local food mixed with some French spices and influence in there. So it made a lot of sense. But it had its own unique twist, kind of Jamaican chicken and Cajun chicken, that kind of feel, kind of mixed between the two is what their chicken tasted like, but it was delicious. So we got to enjoy some local music and local culture. So that was a lot of fun too as well. And this area you could shop around. I found the prices here to be the same prices for the same things as it were in the port or Virgin Voyages docks. But I know at least here you could talk them down on prices. My wife tried to do that. She didn't have any success. So I took a shot of it and uh, I got stuff a lot cheaper than she was able to. So if you had that ability, you may be able to talk them down on price. My wife was able to get some Lamar. I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. Actually, I know I'm probably saying it wrong but it is a rock that's unique to the Dominican Republic. So she got some of that. So some earrings and a necklace of that stone. Afterwards, we had to make the long trip back to town to the chocolate factory. And this was a nice experience. We pulled up, we had fresh hot chocolate, which was amazing. I should have loaded up on that more than I actually did. Afterwards, you take it to the room, similar to the distillery in the house of rum, you had to, you watched a video of the production process. This brings me to the kind of disappointing part of this excursion, or the short thing, as Virgin Voyages calls it, is 
you could tell what you saw was a display model of everything, which is not really a, that big of a deal. But in my mind, I thought I was going to the actual factory and you see the actual chocolate being made right there in front of you. Yes, I understand you may be behind the glass because I've been to some other factory tours to where you actually got to see ice cream, other stuff being made in the actual factory, but you're behind a glass wall. Some had to use some distance between the product and sometimes someone had a glass wall that you couldn't cross, but you could still see what's actually going on. Versus here, they had a display model of everything. They talked to you about it, how the process would go. We didn't need to actually see any of the chocolate actually be made, which was kind of disappointing in my opinion. But when you actually go through the chocolate shop, they were able to give you samples of all the chocolates there. They were all very delicious. You were able to try all your time chocolate and buy some, take some home. All in all, it was very fun. I give this a nine out of 10 for an excursion. The only reason it's not a 10 out of 10 was because it did not actually get to see the tour of the factory itself. You got to see the display area of the factory. Again, I understand, but I've been to plenty of other tours of locations and factories where I actually got to go to an end the area into the production line at a distance, of course, or you got to see it through a glass wall. So actually the production process, not just display models of all the machines. In some of the Virgin Voyages, I might actually do this again, or I may just do the Rome tour. And if you've been on this specific short thing, let me know what you thought of it yourself. And I will see y'all next time.